Welcome to the DIY Writer Show with the mild-mannered, slightly heroic host, Jeff Bacon. Hello, this is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer. Today, I got to tell you all, I'm kind of geeking out a little bit. I'm kind of freaking out, a little bit nervous. I have this author that's sitting across from me on my computer right now. And I got to tell you, she's fucking awesome. She's fantastic. She's got so many things going for her. And if you do not follow her, you need to right now. She's got a huge following. Just be part of her. Uh, what do you call them? Your freaky, freaky darlings. darlings. Freaky, darlings. freaky darlings. Yes. I have a, uh, a uh, person that writes horror uh, books and also twisted thrillers. And she's got a ton of books out there. So if you want to binge, this is the, this is the person to follow. I'd like to introduce you to Joanne Delahaye. Joanne from South Africa. How are you doing? Hello, Jess. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and it's Joan. Didn't I say Joan? I said Joanne. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so damn nervous that I butchered it. Okay. Anyway, starting over. This is Joan. <laughs> All right. Which is fine, you know? It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just like my books. <laughs> a little, little sprinkling of errors here, but it makes it, you know, that much more special. Oh, there we go. There we go. So it's five o'clock on a Friday there. How are you doing? Hot, bothered, but I've got wine. So it's all good. Perfect. Yeah, because it's it's a typical South African summer. So it, it, it's hot and muggy. Uh, we're, uh, we're actually going into uh, winter here where I'm at. So it's uh, 40 degrees outside right now. And, uh, and it's just going to get colder. We're, we're actually talking about snow here. Ooh, but oh, snow yeah. is fun. It is until you, you know, that first, that first snowfall is yeah. fun. And then the second one's okay. And then the 15th one kind of starts to suck. And then by April, when you've seen it like 42 times, it's like, you know, and you're shoveling it and everything else, it's like, fuck this shit. This is true. Well, the thing is, we don't get snow in South Africa unless it's like really weird. I think we, we had snow a couple of years ago and it was this massive freak thing, even though it was just a little minor dusting. But um, I grew up in Europe, in Austria, and... Um, we used to celebrate the snow days because it would mean we didn't have to go to school. Sure. Only problem was I used to have to shovel it off the, the sidewalk, which, considering I'm tiny, was always um, rather amusing for people to watch. <laughs> the neighbors would, like, stood over there and go, let's see how long she lost her that shovel before she plows. <laughs> Oh, you know, since since this is kind of an author show, we should probably talk a little bit about books. What you got cooking? Oh, well, at the moment, I'm working on a couple of short stories. I want to try and put a short story compilation together before the end of the year. Although, um, yeah, with the way things go, that might not happen. Or, <laughs> I'm going to try. Yeah. Yeah. And the short story that I'm currently working on is not quite going the way I thought it would go. Oh. Yeah, I'm a panster, so I start with a vague idea of how it's supposed to start and how it might end up at the end. Sure. But somewhere along the line, the characters just kind of take over and go, oh, party. <laughs> the voices in our heads, they just yeah. do weird things. Yeah, that's why I like to say that um, writers are actually just highly functional schizophrenics. <laughs> that's not wrong. That's not wrong at all. <laughs> I, I, I think so. I think we're just highly functional schizophrenics. Because we have these voices that just kind of like, oh, I want to do this. No, 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 no. You have to do this. No. Mm -hmm. I have the, uh, I have the uh, fortune to be able to sit in my own little room and I've kind of mm -hmm. got it soundproofed and everything, uh, you know, for the podcast. But uh, when I'm doing uh, dialogue, uh, every now and then I start talking out loud and, you know, trying to figure out the voice, you know, and, mm -hmm. and how, how pissed off should I make this and, you know, everything else. And then every now and then somebody will pop their head and, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Leave me alone. Damn it. Well, um 
I have it in the shower. Like I'll be washing my hair and all of a sudden my characters just start yelling at me. So, <laughs> yeah. Or it'll be a case of they want their story to go in a certain way and why aren't I doing it their way? It's, yeah. Luckily I live alone so no one can hear the, the, the conversations. So <laughs> otherwise I might just end up in a straight jacket, which could be interesting and would definitely end up in a story. That would be actually um, in Michigan, not too far away from where I'm at. Um, mm -hmm. There's a sanatorium that you can go and I think it's like 150 bucks a night or something like that, but you can actually go and stay in the sanatorium and it's Ooh. supposed to be haunted and, you know, they have beds Ooh. for you and everything and, and they take groups and it's like, I really kind of want to do that. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. And, and um, the nice thing is it'd be, it would be a loner trip because no one else really wants to go. <laughs> it's like, but it'd be so cool, you know? Well, luckily I have some like-minded friends, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. who would probably definitely go with me. In fact, it would not take much convincing. It would be a case of, want to go? Yay! <laughs> I, you know, and that's one thing I love is um, where I live, there's all these haunted stories. There's actually a town called Whitewater that's mm -hmm. got an entire book dedicated to haunted um, um, locations. And they actually, mm -hmm. uh, not this year, of course, because of, thank God for COVID, but um, they have these tours where you get to go into these houses, these old houses that, you know, okay, this is where this guy died. And these are all the sightings. And, they, and, they, and I think it's like 75 bucks or something like that. But they take you through like 14 or 15 different haunted um, uh, buildings, basically. And awesome. show you these sites. And of course, they do it at night with a flashlight. So it's, you know, just totally cool. Yeah, well, here they have one. It's like a pub crawl, but yeah. for haunted sites. So the, it, you get on a like a a bus, and the, there's a bar on the bus, and then they take you through all the to the cemetery and to the old prison where the first people were hung, or mm -hmm. back in the day when they still hung people, hanged people, and um, hung, hanged, whatever. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the editor's for. Yeah, and then they stop along the way at all these different pubs that date back to back in the day as well. Yeah, and you can you get sloshed while you're going on a ghost tour. That's totally cool. Oh, typical South African style. You've got to get sloshed on the way. Ghost and drinks. That that yeah. that that sounds great. Where when is that and where is that at? Hell, I might join you for that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to convince some of my friends. Well, actually, I. I it probably won't take much convincing. I just have to say, okay, we're doing this for my birthday or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. So you have, um, uh, looking at your website, you've got uh, uh, kind of a blog thing that you do. Mm. Yeah, I've got my, well, it, it varies. It also depends on what mood I'm in. So yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'll do a short story and other times I'll do the my videos. Mm -hmm. on all the weird shit that fascinates me and um speaking of haunted things um i actually did do a couple of videos on haunted places yeah and one of the ones you know because we were talking about asylums and things like that i actually did do a, a bit of research into some of the haunted asylums that you get and there's this one that was in australia that was fascinating because after it was an asylum it became a university no Really? Yes, yes. It's this whole, it's this campus now in Australia. And um, you'll be sitting in class listening to a lecture and they have seen ghosts waltzing across the windows and like babies laughing and <laughs> like, disembodied kids <laughs> screaming. And it's just like, okay, that's it. So imagine sitting in the middle of one of your university lectures and having some disembodied laughter. <laughs> I was just both swalsing across your, your lecture. <laughs> <laughs> How freaking creepy would that be? That I don't know would how much learning you would do, but yeah. Well, you might learn something, but it's not what you're there to study. Mm. And apparently, a whole bunch of people died there. It was quite a um, no notorious asylum. Huh. Yeah, something like a hundred people died or something like that. From mistreatment isn't, and um, neglect. And, isn't yeah. that weird, though? I mean, there's that that type of story in every nation, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, in every country, there's some, you know, 
they put a bunch of crazy people in this you know in this building and they mysteriously die you know hmm. because mistreatment or you know the the mag- they were just left in the or- um and then there was this one in china i think it was china um where they apparently it was run by some rich guy and he also neglected all the patients and rumors spread about the fact that he had gone off and left the patients to sort themselves out and sure and hadn't taken care of any of the maintenance and some people drowned in shit so oh. yeah it was quite a shit show <laughs> a shit show okay and so i assume this has got to be a haunted place of course because yes. you know drowning yes. in shit would cause you know yeah some I disembodiment can't exact specifics but it was quite a yeah it was it was quite an interesting one but the Australian university that was an asylum that is haunted definitely kind of stuck with me. Not to, uh, you know, use your thing, but that fascinates me. Mm. I actually wrote a little note. It's like, I'm going to go look that puppy up. I do so love your YouTube channel. I The one thing that uh, um, you should have more subscribers. People should be <laughs> listening to that. I mean, you know seriously yeah, the thing is i've also got the the instagram stuff and they can see it on facebook so yeah it'll go yeah, okay yeah. well yeah right. okay yeah i get that but on the other hand i'm just like oh cool okay you know i just kind of let them run while i'm you know screwing around it's like this is cool you know oh, and these are short you. stories that you wrote yeah yeah some of them yeah, yeah. well yeah because i'm not going to well, I mean, some of your research, which is like a yeah. like I was telling you pre uh, program, um, you're you're publishing your research. That is just so cool. Yeah, you know, well, the information is out there. It's just putting it into a context where people can actually go, "Oh, I didn't know that," and hopefully giggle a bit at my language and my facial expressions where I go, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. Because I do that a lot. So I have a lot of what the fuck moments. I I love the uh, um, every now and then go, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's it just kind of draws you in. It's like, how did that happen? You know, nobody knows, but, you know, it happened. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, like this, the Marie Celeste. Like, um how did that ship just drift away like and also like i don't know if you know the story of the marie celeste uh no i don't i don't it's that haunted ghost ship okay okay oh are you Um, gonna tell us a story well i I, i'm gonna ad lib a little bit okay because i can always go watch it on my video so all right yeah yeah but the very fact that the one, the captain who fo- eventually found the ship, that after it had been drifting, okay, and who claimed to have been friends with the original captain of the Marie Celeste. Okay? Mm-hmm. So he finds the ship drifting. Okay, no one's on board. There's nothing majorly wrong with the ship. Okay. Okay, I mean, they took a couple of supplies and there's an island that's close by to where they found the ship drifting. Okay. But the fucker just tows the ship, doesn't go to the island to check to see if the crew is on the island hoping to be rescued. He just takes the ship to another port and claims the money for finding it. Okay. But doesn't actually go to an island that is in sight to go and find the people. (laughs) Okay. Of people he he knows personally. Oh, really? Yes, he knew these people personally, but doesn't actually go to an island that he can see. To see if his to buddies... To see if they happen to be there. Okay. To happen to be there. Okay. Okay. So, oh. there's fuck all wrong with the actual ship. The Marie Celeste was just drifting. Okay. But I still think she's cursed because some weird shit happened to mo- everyone who had that ship. Okay. All the captains who sailed on that ship, weird shit happened. But I still can't get over the fact that the buddy finds the ship drifting, doesn't go to look for his buddy, just goes and tries to get the money. Like, hmm. what the fuck? What yeah. kind of buddy does that? So they ever, I mean, 
they ever find anybody, you know, from there? No, no bodies, no nothing? To just, no, nothing. 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 Hmm. Because by the time that he dragged the ship back to harbor to claim the insurance money, no one had actually thought to go and check that island. <laughs> okay. So this poor family with the crew, probably sitting on that island hoping to be rescued. And guess what? No one shows. Well, the worst thing would be watching the, do the boat being towed and it's like, hey! We're here! Uh, um, hello? No, no. No. But he towed the ship to get some money. Yeah, well, that was very kind of him. What a good mm. Samaritan. But there was some vindication because um, the courts looked at him and went, so you just towed this ship in and you thought you were going to get the money. <laughs> Mm, not so much, no. Not so much. I think he got like a ninth of what the ship was valued at. Okay. So yeah, so he didn't score as big as he thought he was going to go. So. There's a little bit of karma there, that, but not much. Just a smidge. But you Just still kind of want to go, asshole. No, I absolutely want to go, asshole. I Not kind of. No. Just, yeah. Just. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. So. I have a lot of those moments when I'm doing the research and I'm finding this stuff out and it's just like. <sighs> that, uh, yeah, that type of stuff, you know, the, um, the way people act sometimes yes. is um, almost, I mean, it's almost unbelievable, mm -hmm. you know, just some of the weird shit that they do. And it's like, okay, you know, this, for instance, my buddy has a ship. He's not there. Yeah, I'll take the ship into port and get some money. Oh, yeah. Look at me. Well, there's this other one that was also kind of had me going, what the fuck? Um, there's this woman. There was this chateau in France. Um, mm -hmm. This poor chick, they, she becomes what they call the white woman. I'm sure you've heard the legends of white women all over the world. They even did one on Supernatural mm -hmm. back in the day. And um, <laughs> this poor woman i still don't know what the hell she did because the, the, there's no story about what she did to deserve what they because they buried her alive there's a slight variation into what she, the, either they buried her in a grave out in the ground or they walled her up inside the castle wow okay yeah. um and the only thing that they said about what she did to deserve it was that she had disgraced the family name Okay. Okay. And she was in a wedding dress. <laughs> okay. So you kind of want to go, what did the poor chick do that her family thought it would be okay to just bury her alive in a wedding dress? So either she was just getting married mm -hmm. or she didn't want to marry the asshole that they wanted her to marry and said, fuck you, I'm not doing this. Which, right. you know, we want to go rah, rah, go for a chick. But instead her family went, Fuck you, bitch. We're burying you alive. It's just kind yep. of... So now she haunts that chateau every full moon in her wedding dress. Well, of course she does. Why? I mean, yeah. 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 So now apparently if you go to this chateau, which is privately owned, still by that family. Oh, really? And, um, yeah. So have you contacted them? To, I mean, do they have mm -hmm. any... Mm -hmm. No, no. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like they're going to respond to some poor little South African author going, so. I got a question but, for you. You never know. I mean, they might. They might be a fan. Yeah. Who knows? I somehow doubt it. Doubt it? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. <laughs> Would have been interesting, but no. <laughs> Just write them a letter and see what they say. What are they going to say? Fuck you. Oh, my God. I'm so crushed. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what the shock, you know. They didn't respond to my... Email going, so I want to tell me the story behind the chick that haunts your house. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, just for shits and giggles because inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, I was doing a little research about uh, how many assholes are in your family. Could you please tell me about this chick? And I'm sure they'd be, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's here, it's in my Bible. I'll just go ahead and read you the story. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really would like to know what the poor chick did that these guys thought that they could just you know, wall her up. So my guess is it's, it's probably, you know, 
uh, somebody that's very, very judgmental that actually, you know, did that because, oh my God, it's horrible, you know, and disgrace the family and everything else. And then, you know, three generations down the road, they read the story. It's like, fuck this. We're ripping this up. It away. <laughs> no one's going to know about what no, happened. <laughs> no one's going to know that she, nope, nope, not going to know nope. that. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> you know, but you kind of hope it's a good story, but it might not be, you know. I think she was called shagging someone that wasn't her betrothed. I mean, even that's not really warrant for um, walling a chick up. <laughs> no, it, it seems like it's a little, uh, little over it's a bit over the top. Just, just, yeah, just, just uh, well, you know, just a tiny <clears throat> we're in a different reaction. society, though. Yeah, but but still, it's kind of <laughs> okay. Granted, this was before. Before, even before the time where it was perfectly legal to beat your wife with a stick as long as it wasn't bigger than your thumb thicker than your thumb oh, thicker than your thumb oh well yeah at least they had standards yeah <laughs> yeah uh i i always like reading about the uh salem witch trials mm. <clears throat> and uh you know the, you know they caught somebody picking flowers so my god they must be a witch let's hang them or burn up, yes. or you know, it's like holy shit. Yes. It just, and, you know, <clears throat> and the fact that if you they drowned you, if you actually somehow managed to survive the drowning, you were a witch and were burnt or squished by rocks. But if you drowned, oh, sorry, you're innocent. Yeah, it's just a test. No, yeah, and you failed. Yeah, but at least you got salvation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're only 14 years old picking flowers, but we're wrong. Sorry. It happens. I'm bad. (laughs) Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, do tell. After that, never mind. You have to kind of. Oh, I was just going to make a snarky joke about Gitmo. Go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, I was like, oh, by the way, you're not a terrorist. I'm sorry. Go ahead and go. It's only been nine years. <clears throat> yes. Oh, God. I can't, I can't believe you'd be pissed at us. So, you yeah, know. Why would you, you know, why would you be angry with us for waterboarding you, making you listen to unbearable music for hours on end and, you know, all that other weird torture we thought we'd, you know, <clears throat> inflict on you and taste to see if it actually works. Yeah. And, and you, you told us nothing. Yeah, yeah, but don't worry, we can't find your family either because we bombed the shit out of your village. But <clears throat> not saying I'm just, I just I read a story yeah. like that and it's like, oh, well, um, somebody screwed up. <laughs> and you know, just, I, we'll just we'll just go ahead and release you. It's like, okay, you just created somebody who fucking hates you and is probably yeah. going to join a group that's going to try and kill you now. Yep, pretty much. You're just yeah. creating terrorists. Well done. Woohoo, naughty badge. Yeah, so you know. Sometimes the investigations don't work like they should. But uh, I, I, the other thing would be prison uh, type uh, stories where 20 years later, we found the DNA. They're, they're, they're innocent. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Especially okay. after with um, death row client people, people who have been sitting on death row and 20 years later, after they were being like shocked to death. And, you know, it's like, oh, well, um, the evidence that we thought was, you know, put them behind bars, it was actually faulty. And um, yeah, oops. There is a story here, and I don't remember the exact details, so I'm going to make some shit up. But uh, mm-hmm. the um, there was a guy that was that. that was in prison for life, mm-hmm. and for murdering somebody, and they found mm-hmm. evidence that it wasn't actually him that that murdered uh, the lady. Yeah, it was somebody else. And so they released him and they paid him some money and, you know, everything else. And it was, oh, let's say a year later. And he's arrested again for uh, murdering a, a lady and burning the body. Um, he was partying too much and he beat her mm-hmm. or something like that. Killed her, he says, by accident or whatever, him and a buddy. And the buddy was the other person that in the original murder that they're thinking was involved with it, but couldn't prove it. Yeah. And so he ended up back in jail. Uh, for life for a second murder and it's just like okay what good did that do anybody but i mean it's just it one of those stories is like 
So I, you know, was this guy a dirt ball to start off with? And that's why he was in jail or did he turn into a dirt ball for being in jail for, you know, 15 years or whatever it was. But then it's also a case of, okay. So if his buddy who helped him commit the second crime was actually the one that they thought committed the first one, chances are they did it together. Right. And then the one took the rap, but then got away with it anyway. And, and then I don't understand your double jeopardy thing. Like how does, wouldn't that also apply then? Well, I mean, if if you're tried and found innocent, and then they find more evidence after the trial, they yeah. can't they can't try you again because you're already tried. Yeah, it's basically double jeopardy. So, but this guy, uh, so he can't be charged for that original murder. That I mean, he was charged and then he was exonerated. Yeah, but then he went and committed another murder. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay. And they caught him on that one. That's just stupid. Yeah. I just kind of want to go, dude, that was like a sign not to do anything stupid. You just got away with it. So, just, you know, be good. But I guess, so, yeah. Uh, a, a friend of mine is a uh, is a uh, district attorney. <clears throat> Handy contact. What's that? Handy contact to have. Sometimes, yeah, but uh, I was just kind of chatting with him, and his his uh, his pearl of knowledge is there are no smart criminals in jail. All the smart <laughs> ones aren't in jail. <clears throat> That's really depressing. It really is, but on the other hand, you know, most people uh, that do something get caught for just you know the dumbest things. You know, yeah, because they're stupid, but if you're clever, you can get away with it. And that yeah. is what, like, uh, that's it's not exactly like the TV shows where they have to really dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and figure out who who done it. Yeah, it's, it's more along the lines of, uh, oh, this guy happens to have, uh, you know, her purse, her cell phone, and everything stuck in her trunk. Yeah, and you know, and her severed hand as a, as a trophy. So, yeah, I guess it's him, you know, type thing. <laughs> Like, um, all you need is a, like one of those neon sign that says guilty. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. And a sign on his back saying, Hey, come fucking get me. <clears throat> I did it. I did it. <laughs> I won't admit it though. I'm not no. guilty. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like, um, yeah. Once again, so that we can politics. Sorry. It's yeah. Um, no. one of our, really bad corrupt she was the head of the saa board and um we recently nabbed her with her hand in the cookie jar she completely mm -hmm. destroyed our airlines and um she was recently in court and all she said was i can't answer that question in case it incriminates me for every single question <laughs> and we're just like you do realize that with every time that you're saying that you are basically declaring that you are guilty. Yep. Every single time you say, I might incriminate myself. That's just a neon sign flashing going, guilty. Well, I did it. Do you want to, do you want to talk about your day job at all? It's, it's incredibly interesting or not really. I don't know how my bosses would feel about me talking about that. Well, then let's not talk about that, but yeah, I might get fired, especially since I'm talking with it in a glass of wine. Let's not do that. <laughs> That would be bad. <clears throat> so how many books do you have out? Okay. Um, 12. 12. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Um, three are full length novels. Um, I must admit, I seem to tend towards shorter condensed kind of things mm -hmm. where it's really action packed, but it's all jammed into, yeah, breathless little roller coaster rides. Yeah. Um, and then I've got um, this, the race series, which is a series of little novelettes. Yeah. Six of them. And then I have got a couple of, yeah. Then there's my short story collection, which is the freebie that everyone can download wherever they like. Mm -hmm. And then there's the two little other little novelettes, Oasis and Burning. And your books are all over the place. They're on Google, they're on Apple, they're on yeah. Amazon, they're on Kobo. Pretty um, much wherever ebooks are sold. Yeah. You can even get them in China. <gasps> cool. Yeah. 
we don't necessarily have that option, but you know, whatever, maybe soon. Well, if you go through um, Publish Drive, you get them into China. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Publish Drive is awesome. They are. They are so cool. Um, I used to use Draft to Digital for all my. Yeah. And, but the thing is, then I changed to Publish Drive because they actually help promote. Mm -hmm. They will send you an email and go, hey, we can promote your book here. You want to go? And they go, oh, yeah. Yeah. And there then I charge you extra. There's this big uh, conference in Vegas that mm -hmm. uh, I was actually going to go to this year. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, then 2020 well, happened. Yeah. So, you know, that's not happening. Actually, uh, um, I would have been there this week. That's sad. But anyway, it's, it's like a week conference in, in Vegas. And and they actually had the person that, that started Publish Drive there. I think it was last year. Okay. Um and they had an interview with her and, and, you know, everything that they, uh, that she was doing. I had heard of them before. I didn't realize how freaking cool that platform is because I'd been looking at draft a digital and it's like, wait a minute, th uh, this is brilliant. I mean, it absolutely yeah. is. I mean, I used to think published, you know, draft to digital was great and, you know, but then someone said, because you could only get onto um, Google play via draft to digital. Right. Or go through a whole bunch of other hurdles if you wanted to get onto there. So mm -hmm. just doing it through Draft to Digital was just much easier. And I still had a whole bunch of my nice books on um, Draft to Digital. And then, yeah, no, I'm getting confused. Okay, so Draft to Digital started off there and then moved for Google Play to get onto public with Publish Drive. Right. And then they started doing all these really amazing like promo options and sending me emails and going, hey, we can do this for you. And Whereas with draft to digital, you have to email them directly and go, so is there anything you can do to help me or, you know, mm -hmm. and most of the time they don't even reply. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that. <laughs> so publish drive was just, they just did some amazing things. And then Jinko even follows me on Insta. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they started like, they shared up, um, like some stuff about my books on their Instagram profile as well and tagged me in it. And it was like, <laughs> you I don't often a, see um, a distributor actually going that extra mile yeah it's just really cool you know the story behind the company is you know i mean it they are filling they are filling a gap that kind of existed you know i mean they yeah. really are making it uh easy for you know a self-published author to go in there and just all of a sudden have the same distribution network as as a lot of published authors you know and it's yeah. fairly simple and it's not that expensive no well i mean they take the usual 10 percent cut <clears throat> you know i mean yeah i think that uh, draft to digital is more expensive than that though mm -mm. no they also take the 10 percent. i thought they had a service fee or something like that that you had to mm -mm. pay no, no it's also okay. the same 10 percent no, oh don't. I'm not going to drop. I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm sorry. There's another company yeah, out there. Quite that, a few of them that are now popping up and trying yeah. to like crouch in on, because it used to just be um, Smashwords. Right. But Smashwords had, was just a really clunky platform and it wasn't really user friendly. It didn't, trying to get your books up there, you had to go through this whole meat grinder kind of thing and it was just a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And then draft to digital came along. And they were a step up, and now published drivers come along with. They're just phenomenal. Yep, that's what. So it'll be interesting to see how that all develops. Well, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see if um, more people start jumping to published drive versus just being exclusive on Amazon mm -hmm. and doing the key, the uh, the unlimited reads, you know, type thing. I yeah. th think. Um, I shouldn't say I think. I know a lot of authors who that's all they're ever going to do mm. because they make a ton of money on KU. Um, but I, I, I have a feeling more authors are going to go wide, especially with Publish Drive being as easy as it is yes. you know, and just throwing it out there. And also the thing is, it's a whole big world out there. I mean, in South Africa, you do not have access to KU. Right. Yeah, there are... And we're not, I mean, I think KU is predominantly an American thing. It's only if you're in America, can you actually do KU? If so anybody if doesn't know, America, KU is Kindle Unlimited. Just yeah. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, good, good. Yeah. Not everyone knows all the lingos and things like no. that. So it's always good to um, educate and tell people things. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> You're delightful. I, I try. Okay. Sometimes I fail miserably, but I do try. That's okay. <laughs> Trying's what counts. Apparently. <laughs> So the thing with KU is it's basically just putting all your eggs in one basket in one bookstore mm -hmm. that is only in one part of the world. Right. Whereas the world is a big place. It is. So, um, and there's lots of places in the world who read in English. So you don't have to worry about translations and things like that either. Right. So to me, it's a case of why wouldn't you want to sell your books to the entire world. Mm -hmm. I, from the perspective of the of you know being an author in the U.S., I think Amazon's a really good place to start. Yes, because they make it really simple. Yeah, if you're just trying to figure out the business to begin with. Yep. Focusing on one store is it's a great learning period, yep. especially since you only have to stay there for three months. Yeah. It yeah, it's like a three month. Um, uh, contract and then you have a choice whether you're going to renew that or if you're going to go wide mm -hmm. now the only problem with being wide is that you actually have to do a little more marketing right to get to all of those other places whereas with ku and amazon you just have to worry about marketing to amazon and amazon after a certain period actually takes over a lot of the marketing for you if you actually do a really good job and you sell a decent amount of books and you get a certain amount of reviews and, mm -hmm. and Amazon will start going, oh, this this person's doing a good job. Maybe we can make some more money off of her or him and, you know, go, oh, cash. Yep. So, you know, whereas with going wide, it is a little more work, but I think you have a lot more going for you if you do go wide. You know, I, I think it's uh, because when I first started out, there's a lot of stuff that was daunting. It was just like, oh my God, how the hell am I ever going to do this? And yeah. just being on Amazon um, kind of made it simple. You mm -hmm. know, at least you figured it out. And yeah. then when you start looking at going wide, then all this other stuff, the stuff that was daunting five years or four years ago, um, now it's like, okay, five minutes, done. You know, no big deal. And the things I used to worry about, nah, I have much bigger concerns now. <clears throat> more, more, more anxieties about bigger things. But, uh, you know, and then you look at something like Publish Drive. And I think after you've been here for a while, I think it makes a lot more sense. I think it especially makes sense to do a soft, you know, take the first three months of your book and do a soft launch. Be in mm -hmm. KU. If it takes off, great. If it doesn't, then just go wide, you know. Let but that puppy also, fly. But for me, it's also Amazon has a tendency of changing the rules. Absolutely. So if all your eggs are with Amazon and then they just change the rules on you all of a sudden, it's like, um, um, oops, um, now what? And then you flounder mm -hmm. because all of a sudden you can't actually make your living off of Amazon. And then what do you do? Well, you know, I think that uh, their advertising platform is probably going towards uh more of a profit model mm. for them. Yeah, well, it's becoming a pay, pay to play. It really is. It really is. You know, whereas on Publish Drive, you have, I mean, obviously you have to do your own marketing, mm. but you can pick different mediums. You can go into BookBub and have a heck of a deal and have a bigger audience to advertise to versus if yeah. you're, you know, only in uh, Amazon, <clears throat> you're not going to do that well on a book, on a, on a BookBub. Well, the nice thing is also with Publish and with drafted, yeah, published drive, they actually have a partnership going with um, Free Booksy. Oh, they do, huh? Yeah, and that whole system as well. So what they actually did for me, which was amazing, I didn't even, you know, really have to do all that much. They actually advertised my books for me via Free Booksy, my two freebies. Mm -hmm. They organized it for me. I didn't do anything. Wow. Yeah. That is completely cool. And then I got all those extra sales on Amazon. 
and the other book sales. Yeah. And all the other platforms. So do you uh do you <laughs> strictly publish on Publish Drive then, or do you go into Amazon Publisher Books there? <laughs> Sorry, I, I promise I don't have COVID. I'm just kind of like, got one of those scratches in my throat right now. It's okay. It's not spreadable through speakers. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> that's good wine, huh? No, actually, that's, I don't think it's what the wine's fault because I wasn't drinking it enough. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, so no, I go direct to Amazon and then for everything else, I go to Publish Drive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm I'm not wide. I'm on on KU because I'm so kind of I what I want to do is I want to have three more books out. Yeah. And then go wide with that strategy book, you know, and, and kind of pile them out there. But uh um now, how many was, books do you have out? I've got three novels. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, three that are ready to drop to an editor. Okay. Um, well, I shouldn't say that completely. There's this one I'm screwing around with, so I'm changing a little bit. And then I've got a bunch of anthologies that I'm in that are out there. Uh -huh. So yeah. I shouldn't say a bunch, like four or five, something like that or whatever. So it's still a decent amount of anthologies. It's not. You know, the thing is with anthologies and stuff like that, they're not always that easy to get into especially if they're really good ones. Yeah. And also, you know, because the submissions process for an anthology is pretty strict. You, in competition with hundreds of other authors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to kind of like, when you get into an anthology, it's a, it's a good naughty badge to kind of like go, ooh, ooh, I got into that. The, um, the uh, one of them that I'm in actually uh, was with a group of authors and we just started it. Yeah. We just do our own anthology, you know, so it wasn't that hard to get in. It's like, hey, you want to do this? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but those are one of the fun projects, though. Right. But you said you know a couple of them, so the other ones, you can't exactly do the same. Uh, it doesn't matter. Nah, no, it, the other ones were a little Don't bit Don't put harder. yourself down. Uh -uh, that's not allowed. Oh, I'm sorry. Of... I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was rules on this show. Okay, you're right. I won't. <laughs> no putting yourself down. It's not a good uh... thing. It's an author thing. I, you, you yeah. know. Yeah, no, that's why when I see authors putting themselves down and like negating their, their accomplishments, I mean, this business is fucking hard as it is. Yeah. So when you actually do get something, when you get something right and you, you get a bit of a kudo kind of thing, and then we kind of go, oh, no, it's nothing. It's, it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, it was fucking hard work to get there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you've got to kind of like, you know, go, yeah, I did that. You know what blows my mind? I've got these three books in this series. Yeah. Okay. So the first book has got, you know, 50 some reviews on Amazon. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. bad. Okay. Yeah. But the sales are pretty good. Okay. Read yeah. through for the second book is like, you know, I mean, it's hard to calculate it accurately, but it is uh, almost 70%. So That's good. Somebody that buys first book, they, they buy the second book. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, cool. And then the third book is uh, just below 60%. So, I mean, I've got, I've got good read through, but yeah. on those other two books, I, don't, I, don't, I have like 10 reviews. And it's like, oh, where, where's the rest of these people? But, you know, the sales tell me that, you know, people are digging the series, they'll review yeah. the first book and then they'll just kind of flow it through. Yeah, but let's face it, people are lazy. Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, if you're going to oversimplify it, that's just not a good conversation. No, just kidding. <clears throat> but I just, I kind of laugh because, you know, I look at my reviews and I'm like, huh, that's really yeah, weird. And I look at the sales and it's like, well, I really don't give a shit because they're buying it. But with Amazon also getting reviews on Amazon is hard because you have to spend a certain amount of money and with Amazon every single year to be yeah. able to leave. Yeah. So yeah, Amazon doesn't always make it that easy to get those reviews. But then you also have those authors that employ those review forms, which piss me off. Yeah. And then they end up with hundreds of these reviews, which are kind of not real. Right. So going wide, is it easier to get reviews on other platforms? Well, the thing is the reviews don't really that matter that as much on the other platforms as it does on Amazon. Oh, I didn't realize that. 
you know, no. Amazon is one of the few places where those reviews really do. If you don't have 50 reviews, it's, it's like, you know, you're nobody. Right. Whereas on the other platforms, because they aren't as big and it's not as driven kind of thing, I guess. Okay. It doesn't seem to matter as hmm. much. Oh, well, then again, that's my perception as a absolute nobody. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're not exactly a nobody, but nice try. There's no putting yourself down on this uh, podcast, remember? <laughs> we have rules here. We have standards. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my, my words always tend to buck me in the ass. Oh, well, you know. <clears throat> so what else you got going on? I, I noticed you do some conservation type things, which is oh, yeah, kind of yeah. cool. Well, it, it's, I try to be as little, how can I put this? Um, I try to tread lightly, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, yeah. So, and also like animals and things like that, they don't have a voice of their own. So it's always good to kind of speak for them a little bit. Sure. So, yeah. So it, it's not a massive thing. It's just, you know. The way I try to give back to the world. Yeah. Something like that. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to be as green friendly as possible, which <laughs> yeah, isn't always that easy, but yeah. <laughs> growing my own stuff and yeah, yeah. less plastic. Less plastic. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, we can all dream. Yeah, we can try. Cheers to that one. Yeah, well, I've got coffee, but. <clears throat> well, it is quite early in the morning for you, so coffee is always a good thing. It's, it's 10 a.m., so I mean, I, I should be good to drink here probably in another 20 minutes. <laughs> and it is Friday the 13th, so. It absolutely is. You know, what do you think about that? Oh, I love the history behind Friday the 13th. Oh, you know what? I do too, but tell me. Well, it's the whole, um, the Templars and how they were hunted down and killed and mm -hmm. people tend to forget that part because they all focus on the movies and the Friday the 13th movie, right. and, you know, but it's actually about power plays in the old Christian church and Catholicism and mm -hmm. the Templars standing up to a French emperor. Yep. So, you know, and the fact that the French emperor got pissed off with some knights and decided to burn them at the stake. You know, it's on Friday the 13th, and that's what people forget. Not only that, but he got the Pope on his side, so he, they got excommunicated yes. from the church, and it's like, okay, it's hunting time. Yes, and um, let's get the Templar treasure, please. You know, oh, it had nothing to do with money. It was, all about, it was all about the belief system. Yes, it had nothing to do with all the money. Right, or all the money that the French uh, emperor owed the Templars. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. So for me, Friday the 13th is about that. It's yes. not, I mean, yes, I enjoy the, the, the black cat story and the, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> all the, the, the don't walk under a ladder and all that fun stuff. And the movies, obviously, because you've got to watch horror movies on Friday the 13th because Gotta have a bit of a slasher fest. And October, yeah, Friday the 13th and October 31st. Yes. Are a must. Uh, yes. And My December, favorite time of the year. And December 18th. But yeah, anyway. December 18th. Yeah. It's Why a scary it? day. I'll let you know later. <clears throat> uh, okay. Why is it your birthday? <laughs> no. What? No, okay. I, no, I was just being a smart ass. But anyway. Uh, Smart ass is fun. Yeah, cool. No, the uh, um, <laughs> uh, the Friday the Thirteenth stuff has always really fascinated me because it's always it's always been you know it's a bad luck day. It's this, it's that, or whatever. And then we look back on the basis, it's it's the church going after you know basically a group of knights that they relied on. For yes. years and years and years, and they amassed a great amount of wealth and they're lending money and everything else. And all it took was these guys actually worship Satan 
and um, and they're really really bad, and the knights are going, huh? What? No, yeah. no. There was, what? And there was absolutely no evidence. It was all fabricated. Yeah, all of it was made up. Yeah, and it just came down to money, mm. which is really odd. I've got a sign. I've actually got a sign sitting up in my uh, room that says, "If money's the root of all evil, why does the church want so much of it?" <laughs> yes it's, it's a really good question yes, yes, you should you should tie this much money because it'll ensure that you'll get to heaven oh oh i didn't really i didn't realize that was a pay for play too all right cool <clears throat> pretty much pretty much but uh the uh, other comment i really like is there's a uh i was listening to um <sighs> A, a guitar player and he's very political over here um ted uh, nugent i don't oh, know yes. why i forgot that yeah and uh, he was on a podcast and he said you know i just wish the catholic church would actually sell some of their shit and buy a couple sandwiches for people that'd just be nice <laughs> instead of bitching about how little money they have <clears throat> and he just went on this rant and i'm just laughing my ass off because it's like yeah yeah probably don't need the gold cup you could go down to a silver cup and you know maybe but well what i thought i don't know if you were ever a indiana jones fan absolutely yes okay now the last crusade yeah now when he has to do all those cups and stuff and he has the all those chalices that he has to decide on whether it's mm -hmm. you know and um the nazi decides he wants to drink out of the the beautiful chalice with the, with the stones and things like it because you know that's the cup of the king of kings yes, yes. and he this is a wrong one and, and then old Indy comes along and he goes, no, he was a carpenter. So he would have had a normal right. you know, wooden that is kind of thing. And I just want to go, yeah, I think that the church might have lost sight of that just a, a smidge. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. The, uh, the funny thing that, uh, the funny thing about the Catholic church is um, when you go through their indoctrination, Yes. Please uh, note, I was raised Catholic and I was a little altar server as well, okay. which one would never say. See, I was a Protestant and then I turned and had to go through all the classes and everything. But what I really enjoy was uh, there's a bishop, is it's Bishop Barron, um, and he's going through the history of the Catholic Church. And he's mm -hmm. talking about how they took all these pagan rituals and all these Roman rituals and all the Christian rituals and put them together to create one really awesome religion it's like wait a minute that's pagan okay yeah. and and this and that and so you started looking at you know the different things that you do and it's like holy shit this is like 60 percent other religions and then maybe 40 percent what the christians were doing at the time and rome just kind of put it all together to make sure they could unify there and and then it became oh nice okay yeah okay i just find it interesting that basically the roman empire well, the last Roman emperor of note basically decided, well, um, he could see his empire is about to go to shit. Right. So um, it might be a good idea if he hitched his wagon onto Christianity and rode that wagon out. Yep. And yep. so basically the Holy Roman Church was basically just a reincarnation of the Holy Roman Empire. Right. It was, you know, Constantine was not dumb. No, he was a great pragmatist. He, he really was. <laughs> I like how you put that. But yes, absolutely. He, uh, you know, in that, in that has lasted, you know, centuries. Hmm. I mean, it really has. I mean, if you look at the influence of, of that religion all over the world, I mean, it's, it, it has truly, it, you know, that is the Roman Empire. <laughs> And, and it's no coincidence that the Vatican City is the richest place in the world. Exactly, with its own standing army. Yep. <laughs> also one of the best trained armies. <clears throat> yep. And so, don't screw with the Catholics. I guess we are here, aren't we? Oh, well. Somebody's going to be clicking off on this uh, on this video. Screw them. Anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, was um, 
what, with my short story collection, one of the reviews I got on Amazon was, um, apparently I have an atheist agenda, which I was not aware of. <laughs> and, um, I mean, my stories are, I, I tackle interesting and difficult subjects in pretty much everything I write. Mm-hmm. But I never actually thought of it as being an atheist agenda because I don't always, I, I don't just deal with religion. I, and I also just ask questions. So it was just interesting that she gave me a one-star review and said I was, I had an atheist agenda. Yeah, I've, I've got a few of those. I actually have to, when I do my negative or do my uh, advertising, I've yeah. got to uh, make sure I put in the uh, negatives for Christianity and, and, uh, <clears throat> some of the uh things because i have angels and demons and and satan and <laughs> and uh lucifer and i i, I just kind of created this whole world but uh the very first book um i actually uh uh take the jesuits and turn them into into the bad guys Ooh, that must be it, it kind of is it's all conspiracy theory type stuff you know it's like you know here they are and they're you know they're acting kind of good and then they get kind of creepy and it's like oh fuck they're the bad guys you know and that's <laughs> those in the rosicrucians are the uh are the bad guys in there but uh, i get these reviews every now and then from people it's like oh my god you're you know it's blasphemy it's you know this it's pentecostal crap you know it's everything else it's like number one this is fiction number two uh there's not uh you know who you're trying to defend is not exactly the uh you know um, yeah, you know the mainstay of of the world here as far as ethics go, but uh, yes. you know, um, do you like jokes? Oh, I love jokes. I got a really dark one for you. Ooh, probably you probably that. know it. Maybe Perfect. not. Okay, I'm, you know, being a hard. I mean, you you know what exorcisms are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what a reverse exorcism is? Do tell. It's where Satan tells the priest to get out of the child. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was funny. Yeah, well, yeah. We've, we've had that problem over here quite often, so. Yes, yes. And I'm sure it's worldwide, but we, we seem yes. to be the, uh, you know. <clears throat> well, let's face it, America seems to be in the forefront of pretty much most scandals. The rest of the world just goes, oh, it's happening in America. It's not happening here. Meanwhile, back at the launch, it is actually happening there, but it's easier to just go, oh, it's happening there. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody likes to point the finger and we're like, what the fuck is going on now? Jesus. Oh. Not just us. When did we all lose control of our country? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Yeah. I have to say, American politics has been fascinating of late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, and that's, you know, um, one of the things with the changes that are happening, and if they actually happen, I mean, we're still counting ballots over here, and yeah. you know, there's nothing finalized. So, I mean, everybody saying that, uh, you know, uh, this particular uh, party won versus the other one, you know, you've got probably another 30 days before anybody can really make that decision, you know, which is the truth of it. For the rest of the world, we're all looking at America and going, um, see, here, one man, one woman, one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. All votes count equally. So if someone wins by four or three million or four million votes, that's the winner. Right. There's no arguing about that's the person who won. Mm -hmm. But with you guys, it doesn't seem to matter if someone wins by three or four million votes. The other dude might still win. Well, that's because we have an electoral college. Yeah, which and, we don't understand. Well, it, it's got to do with population bases. So if you have, um, like California mm. has got, you know, a population base, you know, and they've got so many electoral votes based on their population. But what they wanted to do originally, the, the idea was the smaller states like, uh, you know, the Midwestern states or whatever, they wanted to give them some sort of an equal footing, but also uh, still recognize that they had less of a, of a population base. So the states, you know, states are supposed to be control, in control of most things. And the federal yeah. government's just kind of the umbrella. And it's yeah. kind of turning into the, you know, the federal government is the, uh, you know, big bad. 
and the states, mm -hmm. you know, have less and less rights. But originally it's supposed to be, you know, the states are the ones with all the power. And yeah. so when they're trying to figure out, you know, what state, um, you know, a highly populated state, they didn't want to give them uh, uh, footing based on that population. And so they created this electoral college so that smaller states would still have a say in who was actually running the country. And it, it is a little complex. Um, you know, we understand it just because we live it, you know, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. For the rest of the world, we're kind of going. Yeah, no. yeah. You can win the popular vote, but not the electoral college and you're not president. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of like if. Four million people vote for one guy more than when they voted for the other dude. One would think that that would be the person that won. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, we we just like to overcomplicate things. You know. Because I think you know, if that had happened here, like if um, uh, we had had a guy who had won for with four million more votes. Um, and he wasn't declared the winner, there would have been an international incident and <laughs> bodies would have been going, uh, excuse me, um, have you been fiddling with the votes sort of thing? Um, yeah. Um, are we, do we have to worry about a coup here, kind of, whereas in America mm -hmm. it's a case of, no, that's perfectly normal. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, no, there still might be an international incident. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all grabbing the popcorn and waiting in <laughs> Exactly. Turn on the news. What the hell's happening in America now? All right. Pretty much. It's, it's, it's a great distraction from our own shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're here to serve. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, our job is to fucking entertain, and boy, do we do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much especially like you know shit show year you know we need something yeah you know we need to make sure the comedians all have something to write about yeah because we were all kind of like wondering like what's going to happen if trump does kind of like get the boot what are the, the comedians like trevor noah and you know all those guys gonna do when there's no more trump to write oh, about? they'll just have to <laughs> they might have to retire what are they gonna do it's gonna get really boring you know, it's it's always kind of funny. Um, every uh, every time there's a change in the presidency, that's one of the things that comes up over here. Is what are the comedians going to talk about now? It's like it's the American government. There's plenty. There's there's lots of material. Don't worry. Yeah, they do. See, they never seem to run out of it. So no, <laughs> <laughs> we 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 do like to uh, screw things up. I always i i i've got a I shouldn't say a bunch of friends, but I got friends who are really into conspiracy theories and they're like, you know, there's this, this global power that's controlling everything. And it's like, okay, I can't buy into the uh, big global cabal because if it does exist, they are so damn stupid the way they do things. I mean, nobody, there's no organization, no corporation would run the run things like this. Oh, <laughs> It's just a veil. They're just showing you what they want want you to see. It's like, no, no, this, you know, stupid is stupid. It, it can't really hide that. You know? Yeah. It's like if there really was this massive global community running everything, one would think they would be doing a better job of it. You'd think you'd think so. I mean, I think, you know? either that or they've been on vacation for like the last 20 years or something, and they just come back, oh shit, look, we fucked it up. But oops. Oops, <laughs> I just, I, you know, some of the things that happen over here, it's like, it, there is, the, the plausible theory is no one's in charge. Yeah. You know. That's, that's where I'm kind of like going. It's like, shit cannot be this fucked up if there were someone like, you know, really in charge. Right. So I'm kind of like, or it's like someone left the door open and all the asylum people got out. <laughs> all the inmates somehow escaped and they're the ones running the show yeah <laughs> that's that's a much plausible that i mean that is that is exactly what's happening <laughs> but so um kind of getting back to the old authoring thing and anything do you have anything uh you want to add we're, we're kind of running up on an hour here so i don't know how much time you have i'll i'll stick with you for all day if you want but <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, there's not really 
all that much going on. I'm just working on the short stories and trying to get that out before the end of the year. So yeah. yeah. And then after that, working on a new novel, hopefully, if I don't screw that one up. <laughs> Remember, there's no self-deprecation here. When you get that novel out. Yeah. So um, I, I must admit, I, I, I'm not as fast as a lot of the other writers out there. I think I, I'm happy if I get a book out a year. Yeah. But, yeah, me, right? I'm happy if I get 100 words written a day. Okay. Yeah, the whole um, writing thousands of words a day is not me. It's not going to happen. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's also the, the difference between being a plotter and a panster, you know. Well, you know, the, the problem is with being a pantser, and, you know, we talked about the uh, the characters speaking to you. Then all mm -hmm. of a sudden they take over your book and they do something stupid, like write you into a corner. And it's like, oh, my God, how am I going to get out of that? Okay. <laughs> and then you have to sit there and think about it for a week. And it's like, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And then those bastards come back and screw you up again. And it's like, what are you trying to do? We're trying to get a book out, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. you're, like you and your characters are this big team that's trying to actually work together. And it's like, no. You no, have uh, don't always work well together, so you know it's like running with scissors, somewhat. Yeah, and then it's uh, and then of course I really seem to like making things really hard for myself because um, <laughs> I don't always do the research beforehand. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so while I'm busy writing, I'll go. Oh, I get into a situation. It's like I need to kill someone in a certain way, but I don't actually know how to do that. So, yeah. Uh, Hmm. We can find out how to actually, you know, skin someone alive kind of thing. Right. Or, you know, how long would it actually take to remove someone's heart before they died? You know, things like that. As These horror are writer. questions that need to be answered, yes. You know, <clears throat> the joys of being a horror writer, you, 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 you need to find out some really disgusting things. Right. And um, if the cops were to ever take a look at my search history, they would arrest me everybody says that yes, yes. Yeah. so um and then you know i don't know if they would actually buy the whole i'm a writer please don't arrest me kind of. <laughs> right <laughs> i'm gonna hope so yeah i really do tend to make my life a lot more difficult than what it needs to be and which is why the books take longer oh so i so, i just gotta i just gotta tell you this because it'll make you feel better oh, okay Good okay time. i mean it's just so I've got three books that I'm working on mm -hmm. and it's, it's in the same series. So I, I wrote book four, I yeah. wrote book five, I wrote book six. Okay. And I just, I, I crunched them and then I went back and I'm, I'm editing book four. It's like, wait a minute. Okay. What I did in book six doesn't match up with this. And I quoted something oh. else and it's like, Oh shit. This mm. is why you only work on one book at a time. Oh, yeah, okay. And and, I, and if you're working with a series, you need a series Bible. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have one. It's just that somebody else took control for a while. And <laughs> it's like, you know, and I had I had a chapter where I killed somebody. And then uh, in the next book, they, they uh, just popped up in a conversation. It's like, oh, what the hell am I doing? Mm. No, I fired you. Get out. You know, go away. <laughs> go away. You know, so I had to do some rewriting and everything. And then I can't, of course, you know, you come up with the, uh, oh, this would be a much better idea. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. you know, and then you change it, then all of a sudden, oh, shit, this person has to die. But they're in book five. Okay, book five has to be re rewritten. And so that's been this stupid game I've been playing. And then I have another series that I want to offshoot. So I've been outlining that. Yeah. You know, my outlines consist of this is what the story is. Mm -hmm. and okay this is a great idea just to kind of jog my memory and then i sit down and actually write it and it's like after about the fifth chapter it's like that outline just sucks you know and i never yeah. go back and change it because you know why would i <clears throat> but yeah the, the life of a pantser i desperately want to be a uh a, a you know, an outlier and and, yeah, no. and really get things done and and you know really you know all the details and everything else and it just <sighs> Does it work? <laughs> I tried it and I failed miserably. 
but it's also like one of those those things where like everyone asks me why I write horror why can't I write something nice like romance something sweet oh and it's like I tried I really did and um zombies came <laughs> And butchered everybody. And just ruined the whole thing. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. Or, um, and then they said, well, just, you know, try it again. You know, be, you know. Absolutely. Put into the nice little, the sweet little hole that everyone thinks you should be in. And yeah, yeah no. Everyone no. just died. Really <laughs> screaming. It's funny because some people have a have a, a real talent for writing romance and they can just whip those books out and it's, you know, yeah. and they sell, you know, and it's, you know, fine. Or the uh, the reverse harem stuff's big now and, you know, paranormal romance and blah, 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 blah. And, and I have nothing but respect for anybody who puts a book out. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, most people, you know, there's, there's a few that's like, huh, really? But, it, okay, I, I can believe that's not selling, but you know, and there's some books out there. It's like, holy shit, there's they're like killing it, and this is the dumbest yeah. book I ever read. But you know, or badly written. Anyway, but yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. But um, you know, you put that book out there, but uh, you know, like I said, I have lots of respect. But there are just some things that uh, I look at. And it's like I could never, ever, ever do that. I I write dark fantasy and mm -hmm. horror. So it, you know, my dark fantasies are kind of like horror, but they have a fantasy aspect to them, mm -hmm. you know, and I do write in, in kind of a, uh, a thriller method, I guess, you know, so shorter chapters, keep yeah. the goddamn thing moving, you know, that type of a thing. And uh, so, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but, you know, those dark thoughts come in while you're writing it. It's like, oh, I have this scene where it really should be a love scene. No, I need a chainsaw. <laughs> Oh, yeah. my mother read one of my books. Um, <laughs> she was very brave. She was doing the whole being supportive parent thing. Sure. Afterwards, she looked at me and she went, Joni, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? What did I do to you? Oh, like, no. Yeah, she was, and she was really upset. And she was, she was like, like, Joni, please tell me, where did I go wrong with you? <laughs> what did I do as a mother that makes you write these horrible things? I was like, no, mom, you did a good job. Really, you did. <laughs> yeah, everyone will tell you, you did a good job. And she's like, but but you write such horrible things. Mm -hmm. like, mom, it's not about you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but then she turns around and gets one of her other old biddies to read the same book that freaked her out completely. I was just like, okay, this is the book that freaked you out completely and had you doubting your talent as a mother. Right. But now you're getting your your old buddies to read the same book that freaked you out completely. And she went, yes, but I'm so proud of you. So <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> um, the flip. Then we, then we had a dinner party with her old buddies and they all looked at me and they went, Joni, Joni, this is not the little girl we know. I'm like, well, I'm not that little girl anymore. So yeah, <laughs> it was quite funny. I had uh, a uh, my wife's sister-in-law and uh, when I first, when I published my first book and uh, she's like, oh, I'm in a book club. You know, I'm going to suggest this one. I said, here, why don't you read it first? And she read like the first two chapters and she's very um, yeah, innocent. Maybe that's a good word. I mean, you know, very, you know, prim and proper and, you know, very, very nice. I mean, she's just an excellent person, but uh um, she read like the first, you know, few chapters and sat it down and I never heard another thing from her about how did that go at the book club, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you just want, you don't want to ask because you no. kind of like know that it's just, mm -mm, no. No, no. no. <laughs> just the look on her face while she was reading. It's like, yeah, that's not, that's not making it into the old, uh, old book club, but you know. Yeah. And also when people start reading your stuff in front of you and you can see by the looks on their face and it's just like, oh God, they got to that part. Uh -huh. when, when you see the looks on their faces and they look at you and they go, oh. And you just, okay, I did not need to see that. But when they laugh, if they laugh later on, then it's like, okay, no, that that, that, that was the right reaction. But right, it's, right. It's but still kind of watching people's reactions. Mm -mm. 
that horrified look and then they kind of you know keep on eyeballing you while they're reading you know they read eyeball you you know just to make sure you're not going to jump them from behind or something but yeah Um, Yeah. i've actually been dumped by a guy because of what i write so really yeah no a guy broke up with me and he read one of my books and um he said you're a lovely girl you're very sweet but um i cannot put together what the person that writes that with the girl I'm dating. It just doesn't <laughs> um, I'm now afraid that I will wake up to you with a knife. So um, it's been lovely, but you scare the crap out of me. Like, well, fuck him anyway. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. quite a, yeah. It's an interesting way to get dumped. It kind of is, but uh, you know, the revenge is, is simple. Just write a book about him. Oh, and I, he dies badly. <laughs> yeah, no, he did. <laughs> cool beans. I got to tell you, I am uh, extremely happy that we uh, that we got together on this. Um, it's been my honor to speak with you. It really has. It's been lovely chatting to you, and it's getting rather late here. As you can see, it's now... I'm going to have to start switching lights on and it is a bit darker there. I hadn't noticed. I've just been Mm -hmm. uh, chatting along, but uh, um, truly if you, uh, you know, if you want to come back on here anytime, just, just shoot me an email. Love your work. What's that? It's been lovely. Absolutely. Yes. Oh my God. I just threw that right in my mouth. That was me spilling my coffee. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> idiot. Yeah, I know. But anyway, um, um, truly, like I said, thank you very much for being on on this show, and uh, I look forward to uh, not only your YouTube videos and uh, the weird shit that fascinates you, but uh, um, also your uh, next short stories. It's uh, like I said, it's truly a pleasure. It's been a pleasure being on your show, and I'm sure it's gonna get a massive audience yeah someday someday five or six more remember yeah well, I, I i forgot about the rules i'm sorry Ugh. yeah it's your show and you forgot your own rules Dude. yeah it's true shoot <laughs> damn it anyway in closing this is jeff bacon with the diy writer podcast um if you would please subscribe follow or just listen to this as often as you can you get to hear about all about your uh, favorite authors and uh you know uh get some interesting information i uh want to thank you very much for listening and i hope you all have just a glorious day bye now bye Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.